Okay, so we're going to look at the thermodynamic cycles practice. And yeah, let's kind of start it off. So for the first one, we're saying a gas undergoes an expansion in which 400 joules of energy is added to the gas by heating. The internal energy of the gas changes from 700 joules to 800 joules. The work done by the gas is, and we want to figure out how much work is done. Uh, so I kind of did these already, um, just because I thought it would go a little bit quicker. But so what we can use is the first law of thermodynamics that tells us the change in internal energy is equal to the heat plus the work. So in this case, it says that the work is done to the gas. So it's done to, or sorry, so the heat is added to the gas. So the heat is added to the gas, which means that it's gaining that energy. So we have plus 400 joules of heat, and it says that our internal energy changes from 700 to 800, which is an increase in 100 joules. So we see, okay, well, our internal energy increased by 100. We added 400 joules of energy by heating, which means that if we want this to work out, if we want this first law to work out, we have to have a work of negative 300 joules. Or in other words, the gas has to do 300 joules of work on the environment. So it has to lose that 300 to satisfy the first law of thermodynamics. All right, for question number two, or I guess three, because name is number one, a gas with a fixed number of molecules does 32 joules of work on its surroundings and 16 joules of heat are transferred from the gas to the surroundings. What happens to the internal energy of the gas? So again, this is just kind of us going in here and applying new, or the first law of thermodynamics and really keeping track of the signs and making sure that we know what's going on with the signs. So the gas is doing 32 joules of work on its surroundings, which means that that is going to be negative. So work is lost. Oops. Yeah, so if we have our little drawing here, uh, we have negative work or joules. Oops. So the gas is doing work on the surroundings. So it's losing that energy. It had the 32 joules and then it gave it away via this process of work. And then we're also saying heat is transferred from the gas to the surroundings. So it had that energy in the form of heat and then it transferred 16 joules from the gas to the surroundings. So it lost 16 joules, it gave it away. So then if we use our first law of thermodynamics, we have negative 16 joules for the heat term, negative 32 for the work term, which gives us the total change in internal energy of negative 48 joules. So it's gonna decrease by 48 joules. Yeah. For this one, an ideal gas is taken from initial state I at pressure P0 and volume V0 to final state F at pressure 2P0 and volume 2V0. The figures below represent four possible processes by which the gas can be taken from state I to F. For which process is the work done by the gas greatest? So we see in each of these cases that we're going from a lower volume to a higher volume, which means that work is being done by the gas. So we're losing that energy work is done by the gas through that increase in volume. So if we look at these, we say, oh, well, we have pressure versus volume. And we learned that the area under a pressure versus volume graph is going to be work. So we're really looking at here, which one of these cases maximizes the work, or in other words, maximizes the area. So I said that, but yeah, so we want to figure out which one of these has the greatest area underneath it. And it looks like it's going to be C. If we're comparing them, we're looking at the total area underneath, not just like what is, uh, yeah, so we're looking at the total area. So this one only has a little bit. And yeah, that will have the maximum area. All right, a sample of an ideal gas is taken through the cycle ABCA as shown in the PV diagram below. What is the change in internal energy of the gas for process BC? So for BC, Let's kind of start this out and figure out how much work is done in BC. Maybe we'll start with the first law of thermodynamics. So if we look at this, we can say, okay, well, the volume's increasing. It's going from 0.5 meters cubed to one meters cubed. And if we're using our first law of thermodynamics, we can say the volume increases. So we have this negative work term and we can figure out the total area underneath there. And we find that there is work of negative 1500 joules. So then we can look at our first law of thermodynamics 
and be like, okay, well, we know that the work term is negative 1,500, but we don't know Q. We don't know the heat term, so we can't figure out the change in internal energy. So that's kind of weird. So let's think a little bit and say, okay, well, our change in internal energy is really based on our change in temperature. So maybe we have an isothermal process, a process where we don't have a change in temperature. Let's check that out. So to figure that out, we know our gas law tells us PV equals nRT. And if this T is constant and this N is constant, this R is constant, then PV at any location along that isotherm should equal PV. So we find P at B is equal, or PV at B is equal to 4,000 times 0.5 is 2,000 joules. PC and DC is 2,000 times 1 is also 2,000 joules which means we have no change in temperature based on our gas law, which means our change in internal energy is zero. We do not have a change in internal energy. All right, a closed chamber filled with a gas that is modeled as ideal has a movable piston of area A. The graph below of pressure P as a function of volume B shows three processes that make up cycle X, Y, Z, X through which the gas is taken. Process ZX is isothermal, during which process is no work done on or by the gas. So we said before that in order to change the work, we have to compress or kind of extend our gas. We have to change the volume. We either have to push on it or have it push the environment. So if we have no work, that's associated with a isochoric situation, a change or a situation where we have no change in volume. So if we look at our graph from Y to Z, is a situation where the volume does not change. So the work is zero if we have no change in volume. YZ is our only case that has no change in volume. All right, then for the last one, same exact setup. This time we want to know process ZX is isothermal, uh, during which process the amount of work done on the gas equal to the amount of energy that the gas exchanges with its surroundings through heating or cooling. So this one's tricky. It seems a little bit hard. But what we want to start with is our, well, kind of writing down this idea first, uh, which process is the amount of work done on the gas or this positive work equal to the amount of energy that the gas exchange with its surroundings through heat. So we have work done on the gas. Let me just start this now. We have work done on it. And we said we're also losing energy because we're heating the environment. So we want this positive work to equal the negative heating term, so the negative or the heat lost by the environment. So we want this idea where positive W is equal to negative Q. Let's look at our first law equation. We can say, well, our internal energy is work plus Q. And what we really boil down to, if positive W has to equal negative Q, we need our change in internal energy just to equal zero. If we have that equal to zero, then we can just subtract Q from both sides, and then we satisfy what this question wants. So we have this work is equal to negative Q if we have no change in internal energy. And we know that the process that's associated with no change in internal energy is an isothermal process, a process where we have no change in temperature, because changing the internal energy is only possible if we change the temperature. So we're looking for an isothermal process. Thankfully, the question just tells us Zx is isothermal, so we know that Zx is our process. All right, so those are the multiple choice type questions.